Of all the items I make to sell or give away as gifts, coasters are by far the most popular item. Coasters have a real practical use. They can be made for very little cost and can be produced from something as simple as a piece of card. They're great for craft fairs because they don't cost the earth to make and for people to buy. So they tend to be good sellers and if they do the job properly they'll help prevent damage to furniture and furnishings and all for very little expense. A drinks coaster is simply a piece of material that's placed in between the drink itself and the surface in which it'll be placed upon. This helps to protect the surface from things like scratches and heat and stains. A coaster can be made from a number of materials but I thought what I'd do is to make a playlist of videos showing various different ways to make wooden coasters and use a variety of different methods to produce them. So no matter what tools you have available, there's always some type of coaster that you can make. If you just have a handsaw that's fine, if you've got a CNC then the world's your oyster. In this first video I'm just going to be looking at coaster shapes and sizes and looking at various ways to make a basic coaster. There are other ways to do things but it's just to give an idea so if you have limited tools you'll still be able to produce some nice looking coasters. It's worth mentioning at this point that aesthetics are a bonus and help to sell your coasters if that's your goal. But ultimately a coaster doesn't have to look at all pleasing to the eye to be effective. You can literally just cut a circle from a cereal box and you've got yourself a coaster. But what we're hoping for here is to create both a coaster that's effective and pleasing to the eye. So the first thing is how big does it need to be and what shape? If it's too small then you risk whatever's placed on it falling off. And the wrong shape can also be a problem because it could make whatever's placed on it unstable. For that reason most coasters tend to be circular or square. They can of course be any shape but circular and square just seem more practical. So to keep things simple I'll look at how to produce those two basic shapes using a variety of methods. To start with I'll look at the most basic of the two options, square coasters. Whilst they're very basic in shape, there are quite a few challenges that can occur if you've got limited tools or machines. Although sometimes it may be the case that you're going to struggle because it's much safer to use basic tools and all you've got to hand is heavy duty machines, so it can work both ways. When it comes to wooden coasters it can be personal preference to use thick or thin wood. If you're using MDF or plywood you can sometimes get away with thin coasters. But if you're using solid wood, things can be problematic as it may be difficult to keep the coasters flat. I tend to keep my coasters a minimum of 12mm thick when using solid wood and may be thicker depending on the design. Gluing up small pieces of wood is also a great way to make blanks for the coasters and in many cases they end up being more stable than a larger solid piece of wood. So before I can start marking out or cutting anything I need to have an idea on what size I'm going to need. It may be that you have a specific cup or glass in mind and may need to work from that or you may just be looking for a size that will fit many different mugs or glasses. No doubt at some point you'll make a course that looks great only to find it's too small for a particular cup but that's just how it is sometimes. I have a selection of cups and glasses here and I've taken a few measurements and worked out that if I make my blanks around 110mm wide that'll do for most occasions. Here I have some MDF, some birch ply, some oak from an old table, maple that's been previously used on another project, some tongue and groove off cuts, I've got some square cut beech, Some more MDF and a piece of Maranti. Most of this is scrap and works fine for coasters. Now I'm fortunate in the sense that I've got some half decent machines that I can use to prep most of this wood to create the shapes that I need. But as I'll demonstrate in a minute, you can make coasters from the most basic of tools. Depending on your skill level, the aesthetics can suffer a little. And by that, I mean that my skill with a handsaw is terrible. So if I'm cutting out a blank by hand, it won't look as square as if I've done it by machine. But it's always going to be the case as machines are far more accurate, but some people prefer the more handmade look and feel anyway. So assuming I've literally no tools whatsoever and I'm looking at producing a coaster and I'm not too fussed about how it looks, it's still possible with just a ruler and a sharp knife. All I'll say here though is that you need to be really careful. Don't press too hard in case you slip, but with time and patience it does work using a knife to cut through the birch ply. It's not a method that I enjoy, but I have done it many times before and ply coasters can look really nice. Cutting with a knife is hard and time consuming, so the next step up is probably a handsaw. The finer the teeth the better the finish, but depending on the material you may need a more coarse saw to cut through the material. Moving up to a power tool or machine will be my next choice. A jigsaw will work, but can be fiddly and it's not very neat. A bandsaw is a much better option, but the main issue is the cut surface can be quite rough, although if you've got a hand plane, a plane or a sander, you can smooth it down fairly easily and I'll show you how it can be done with a sander later on. If you've got a table saw that's much better as a decent blade will leave a smooth and parallel cut. 
providing the board is long enough to cut safely, although a cutting jig could be used for smaller pieces. Cutting boards like this to size is easy if you've got a chop saw, but a hand saw will work here as well. Sometimes you might only have small offcuts to use, but gluing them up to make bigger pieces is always an option. This is also a way of being really creative and you can create some really nice looking courses simply from gluing up smaller pieces or purposely gluing up larger planks to cut down later on. So you've cut your square course to shape and you could of course leave it as it is, but at the very least you should ease the edges so that they're not sharp. The easiest way is with a piece of sandpaper. A small hand plane could give you a neat bevelled edge, or if you've got a table router it makes light work of rounding the edges. If you want to round the corners you could just use sandpaper, you can use a file or a sanding machine, a handheld sander or even saw off the corners, but whatever way you choose you'll probably want to finish shaping and smoothing the course to with sandpaper. It's also worth checking the finish that you might be applying to the course at the end, as some oils for example prefer 150 to 180 grit maximum and don't always work well with the super fine grits. So that's a few ways to create the square coasters. Of course if you've got a CNC the process can be a lot different and you'll be able to see this if you check out some of my CNC videos that I've linked to this playlist. To make a round coaster can be a little trickier, especially to get it perfectly round. As before you need to work out the size you're going to need and prepare the relevant blank. Making a circle outline is relatively simple, you can simply draw the shape onto the wood using a round object like I did with a card or a compass. Cutting it neatly is the challenging part, a coping saw for instance is one way, a scroll saw or a band saw is another, sanding it to a circle is definitely an option as is using a flush trim router bit, and of course if you've got a CNC machine you're sorted. But the method I prefer when not using the CNC machine is to use my band saw jig. A link to making this should pop up at the top of the screen, but this works brilliantly and it leaves you with quite an accurately round cut coaster. Just make sure that you use a small enough blade to cut the circles. I've demonstrated here the poor finish you'll get from a blade that's too big for tight circles, but the reason I've done this is to show that it can be fixed if you've got a sanding machine. The coaster is a mess from using an incorrect blade, but if you spin it around on the sander you'll end up with a fairly smooth and round coaster. The downside is that you'll have a small hole in the surface, but you can be creative and make a feature from the mistake as I've done here using some leftover milliput. Here's a few courses then from the scrap pieces that I've cut into either squares or circles. Everything is sanded and ready for a finish to be applied. The question is what finish do I use? Well, this comes down to personal preference and what's required of the finished item. You can of course just leave them unfinished because ultimately the coaster is expendable, but applying a finish can help prolong the life and the look of the coaster. A wax finish will offer some degree of protection, but it's limited and would need reapplying quite often. The finish I like to use on my courses is this kitchen oil from Blackfire Oils. This tends to last many years and if I've ever felt the need for the courses to be freshened up I just give them a quick sand and apply another quart or two of this oil. I find two quarts of the oil gives great protection. What works best for me is to apply the oil, leave it for 5 minutes, then wipe off the excess and allow it to dry overnight. I'll then repeat the process the following day and then leave for 3 days to fully cure. It's important to note that the rags need to be disposed of carefully as they can self combust which I've previously highlighted in another video that I made a while back. So hopefully this video gives an insight into making some basic coasters. This video is really an introduction to an ongoing playlist so if it's of interest then by all means have a look at all the other videos that I've added to this playlist and there'll be many more to be added and hopefully there'll be something for everyone within the playlist. If not then by all means send me a suggestion and I'll look into making it. So thanks for watching and most importantly be safe and have fun.